is okay. <coughs> okay, so uh, let's start the talk. So my talk is about uh, the, uh, using the sound, which is acoustic wave, to interact with the liquid, especially li liquid droplet or liquid in micro channel, and then uh, forming the different uh, strange phenomena or exciting phenomena. So the idea behind it is that uh, we have lab on chip, bio chips, which we normally use for uh, doing something like a, a disease detection or diagnosis of uh, the different cancer structures. So in the hospital, people using the different tubes and then got a lot of blood sample, which we will, yeah, the, the nurse and the doctor will need to analyze what is inside the blood and uh, identify what the disease. Normally we need a, a hundred cc of blood, quite a lot of different bottles bot of blood, which is a lot, large amount of the consumable blood samples. Well, the lab on chip basically is using a small chip which integrates with the micro channel and micro system and micro sensor in a very tiny chip, which even one of the droplet, blood droplet, extracted, um, transported, separated, moving inside the micro channel, and then uh, going to different places for sensing. And then the remaining waste will be pumped away, and then we will have a kind of small chip which can have a multiple detection uh, and with a much better uh, um, you know, detection sensitivity and also very good efficiency, and uh, maybe one small droplet of blood, you can identify hundreds of different diseases simultaneously through this small lab on chip. Only, um, the question here is that uh, there are a lot of different technology which using for the sensing and using for this kind of microfluidic transportation. So that means if the, even the small chip is quite uh, you know uh, small, uh, but the trouble is that you have different detection system, which is quite large, huge, um, for different functions. Um, always people ask whether we have kind of one technology, one techno technology which can realize most of functions. So that means starting from the droplet sample, and uh, how can we differentiate? How can we make the smaller, tiny droplet? And then how can we move the droplet to the different places? And then enhancing the droplet reaction. And then after reaction, we will need to using the same technology for sensing. And then after sensing, we need to removing or remaining the waste away. So all of them, um, we prefer to have one simple technology. And then this technology is what I'm doing is called an acoustic wave. So acoustic wave basically is um, using a material called piezoelectric. So piezoelectric material are some of the material which have the special structure. And if without any external force or pressure or without any electricity applied to the sample, then the structure is symmetrical. So there is no an external voltage generated or no any external force can be generated. But once you press this material, the material become asymmetrical. That means there will be extra um, dipole electricity will be generated. Mm -hmm. Or if you apply the voltage to this sample, then because the, the sample, the structure become asymmetrical, and then there will be deformation according to the different uh, uh, different directions. So this is a piezoelectric uh, uh, property for some uh, materials. Uh, the common material like quartz, uh, silicon oxide, which is very common piezoelectric materials. And, and then you can using this function doing sensing and actuation. For example, if you're doing sensing, basically you just uh, need to apply any external disturbance like uh, temperature, pressure, or uh, force, or the humidity, or electricity, then the material deform and produce the uh, signal. 
or you can use it as an actuator. Basically, you apply the voltage to sample, and the sample will deform. Once it's deformed, it will push or, uh, or press or give the function, uh, actuation function. So this is a, a basic principle for the material, which is called piezoelectric material. Surface cooled wave or cooled wave technology basically all based on the piezoelectric effect. So normally, if we have the piezoelectric material, we can make electrode, metallic metal electrode on t top of it. Normally, we ha can have the like comb drive, finger structure electrode. And if we apply the very high frequency, like a megahertz, kilohertz, or gigahertz, then because the piezoelectric material uh, effect, so that means the voltage high frequent voltage will change into vibration, change to mechanical vibration. Then this um, action like a earthquake, the source of earthquake. So and then they will generate the the, the surface vibration and wave propagation on the surface. It's similar like an earthquake. Earthquake generates the wave, then the wave propagation on Earth's surface and then destroy all the houses or buildings or rivers, whatever, and when the propagation. So surface cooled wave generated on the pure electric materials, the amplitude is actually very small. So basically it's a nano, less than nanometer, several Armstrong. But even though it's very small, its effect is significant. So let's see what's going on if we put a liquid droplet here. So if we put a liquid droplet, once the wave propagation, then the wave will interact with the liquid. So there will be energy dissipated into the liquid. So once the wave propagation, some of the wave will propagate into liquid, some will wave continue propagation along the surface. So the wave enter inside the liquid following the physics law, which uh, we can use uh, the theta can be calculated by the wave velocity inside the droplet and divided by the uh, velocity uh, along the solid surface. So this we normally call the radial angle. So that means the wave will go at a certain angle into the liquid. Once the wave goes into the liquid, it will move in the liquid inside. So we call it the internal streaming. So the liquid will stream inside the liquid. So let's look at the nano scale or atomic scale. What is the vibration? So the surface cooled wave basically is only a few Armstrong or nanometer level vibration. And you can imagine that uh, if the liquid is on the vibration surface, the energy is vibrating significantly into the liquid and causing the liquid activation. So this is the principle for the microfluidics of a Kuzui wave interaction with liquid. And then based on it, um, we can put uh, um, the droplet in front of the wave propagation. And we're actually using the simulation a finite element analysis tool to identify how the wave interaction with liquid how the liquid in uh, streaming or flowing inside the droplet. Basically, we can see that uh, from top view, it's like butterfly pattern. So the liquid inside flowing internally and causing the butterfly flowing. Cross-section um, from front view, top view, side view, you can imagine that the liquid actually internal streaming significantly according to the wave. And then if we want the droplet moving, what we do is just increase the power. So that means increase the power, the energy is much higher. Then the liquid will push forward. So let's see some examples here. So here is a small tiny droplet. And then if we want to, to let the liquid flowing smoothly, we need to do the surface hydrophobic treatment. So like Teflon, like cooking pan, right? We have a layer of Teflon. So we're using the similar polymer and treat the surface with hydrophobic. And then we put the liquid with a very small power. The droplet is moving on the surface. 
And then if you look carefully, what is moving is actually rolling together with sliding. So it's a mixture of rolling and sliding together. So how much is the rolling, how much percentage is sliding is depending on power. Higher power is more like sliding. Lower power, power it gives the chance for rolling continue the process. So this is uh, the function for we call the pumping or transportation. And further on, we can use it for mixing. So normally uh, in microfluidics, it's very difficult to move very tiny droplet. You need a very high power. Well, if we're using the acoustic wave, acoustic wave will inside one of droplet and push forward, and then the droplet will merge together, and then uh, the mixing will be very fast in a few nanoseconds. The will become very uniform. So surface could wave once it generated, it could be a very good uh, ways for pumping, mixing, all these functions. So that is uh, uh, still at uh, the, the not very high power. And based on it, we can actually doing a lot of functions. For example, um, you can put a glass ball. This is first picture here. The glass ball sitting on the liquid layer. Once the power is applied, then the glass ball with liquid will be pushed forward. So actually liquid will transport glass ball together. But if you don't have the liquid below it, it it's difficult. You will never move it. So that means the water interaction with liquid, uh, the, with wave, is very critical. So with water below it, you can actually transport them large mass of like a ball, um, steel ball or other uh, object. And also you can use in function. You can give the using function generator give the step by step power. So the liquid actually moving step by step. You can control what is distance, control what is uh, and also you can put uh, some a lot of particle inside. You can actually mixing and see the what is the particle movement inside the droplet. So it's very, um, a very exciting phenomena if you play with a different parameter. OK, so that is just the low power. So if we further increase the power, what could be happening? The liquid in this case will not only moving, it could be jetting. So that means it just ejected from surface, like a become liquid beam. So we just like, show the a, a good movie. So in this case, the liquid, the power, the cruise wave is propagation from the right hand side to left hand side. The power is quite high. And then the liquid, the surface is hydrophobic. And then the liquid doesn't have time to move forward. And in very short time, we have high, high power, surface hydrophobic the liquid actually be ejected from surface. You can see the angle basically is following the physics law. It's really angle which we discussed. So the liquid, the whole ejection process will be like nanosecond, very short time. If you look by eyes, you just won't see it. But if you're using high speed video camera, you will see what is the formation of liquid and how it can be ejected. OK, so that's a very exciting. Um, what about the liquid is larger? What's happening if the liquid is uh, quite large? So we hope this movie is working. the linking problem. Anyway, so once the droplet is very huge, then basically it's still ejection, but because the gravitational um, the force, the liquid actually moving down. But because you continue to have the force applied to liquid, so the liquid is just a continued ejection without dropping on the ground until it's ejected wholly from the surface. OK, so that is the, um, the work for the ejection. But uh, in that case, normally the, it's following the really angle, which is 70, 
71 or 72 degrees C from the, from the uh, vertical horizontal line plane. Well, in most cases, like an inject printer, we need the vertical jetting. So that means we need to eject the surface from vertically up forward. How to do it? The easiest way is that uh, we can have uh, two IDT, two electrodes, generate the wave from both sides of the liquid droplet. And this liquid droplet will become internal streaming. But because the force is balanced, there is no way for the droplet moving to either side. The only way is that uh, the droplet will have a chance to move up. So this is the very easy way to re realize the vertical jetting through the two IDT, two, uh, in, uh, two metal electrodes from both sides. So let's give a movie which showing what is happening. So if the wave from both sides, then this droplet actually have been pushed up and then further ejection from surface because surface had phobic. So the liquid can be ejection totally. And then because gravitational uh, force, it will uh, drop down again. And then it will continue ejection by the um, surface cooled wave. And then until it's uh, totally gone, uh, ejection away from other places. So this is a very significant effect uh, which we can look. If we using the high speed camera, identify what's happening step by step. Basically, the wave will propagate from the both sides of the droplet. And then the following physical law of Rayleigh angle. So the wave from both sides along the Rayleigh angle push the droplet up. And it once it's going to uh, the wave propagation to the interface surface of the liquid, it will, it will be reflected. So the wave will continue propagation inside and then further push the droplet up. So this is actually step by step. And then until the whole droplet has been pushed at like a beam line. Um, of course, it cannot be continued, you know, um, you know uh, uh, tear up uh, continuously like long beam. At a certain stage, the surface tension couldn't hold the whole liquid beam. And then the liquid drop, uh, liquid will become separated, break up into a, a small pieces of uh, liquid droplet. So this is a whole uh, process. It's all following the two wave interaction with it from both sides into the liquid, reflected and push the droplet up and up. Of course, you will think that, okay, um, that's from two sides. It could be difficult if we have the two electrodes uh, at the simultaneously with good functions. Can we use just one electrode? The way we are doing, we can use a kind of circular pattern. So the electrode is actually a circular with, then you can imagine that the wave will generate from all the sides concentrate into the center. So the liquid will be pushed up continuously until it has been ejected. So we, we're actually using the kind of um, laser beam to um, detect what is vibration if we're using circular pattern. You can see that uh, the wave propagation into the center has a very good concentration effect. In the center, the vibration become more significant. So that means the liquid would be uh, ejected easily into the center. If we have the high speed camera, we actually can look what's happening into the liquid droplet. So the liquid actually push from all the sides and the center of droplet will push up significantly at the liquid beam until the whole droplet has been ejected from surface. So that means we can actually, using the different ways, electrode, and to realize the angled jetting, vertical jetting, or different angle jetting. Another way which is interesting is we can doing something like the liquid become break up into a very, very small droplet. We normally call it the mist, it's fog 
basically the liquid is so small that it become a vapor, vapor type. So this one we normally call the nebulization or atomization. So this is a very uh, interesting um, uh, work and uh, it has a lot of uh, application. For example, we can using the atomization to get the, uh, the liquid, the small droplet, and then like a drug inhaler. So you can generate uh, the mist of drugs with the liquid together, which is very good for lung uh, disease treatment. Also, we can also use it for chemical analysis. Basically, you can use this method to generate the liquid tiny droplet and then using the liquid va vapor or mist to together with mass spectroscopy, we can identify what is composition, what is the, the elements inside in this liquid. This is very good for something like a drug analysis or uh, for some liquid analysis, what's the disease or what's the uh, toxic element inside. Or you can also use it for nanoparticle uh, generation or nanoparticle patterning. So the principle is that uh, once the wave interaction into the liquid, and uh, of course it's following the Rayleigh angle and propagation in the liquid. And in this case is that the power is very high and also the surface is not hydrophobic. Surface is more hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means the liquid will stick, stick there. It won't move. At very high power, high frequency, then the liquid just vibrating significantly and then some of the tiny droplet will break up from the surface and form a mist. So this is the principle. It's high frequency, high power, surface hydrophilic. And then we have the movie. I think the linking is uh, something wrong. There's a linking. And the, the mouse field, you have to scroll the mouse right down. the movie this is the movie showing the liquid droplet a very tiny droplet once it's applied to the high power you can see that there is a significant vibration on the surface and then uh, the liquid become vapor vaporized and then continue ejection from the surface okay so Okay, so if we look at the, the droplet surface, we can see that uh, um, there will be, there are a significantly vibration on the surface because the liquid um, is, is standing on the hydrophilic surface. So the liquid won't move, but because the high fre frequency vibration, the surface has actually been like a, a generated a lot of capillary wave, the small wave vibration continuously once the energy is accumulated enough, and then the surface will be generated a very, very tiny droplet and moving um, and, and the ejection from surface. And like the, the liquid bomb, suddenly it becomes uh, uh, vaporized. 
from cross section point of view, you can see the liquid at the beginning without the power is uh, hydrophilic. And then if you apply the power, the surf surface become capillary wave generated and vibrating significantly. And at a certain time, very short nanoseconds, then it like the volcano generated. And then there will be a lot of very, very tiny liquid drop generated, continue move up, more and more liquid, um, uh, small drop will generate generated. Until continually apply the power until the, all the liquid has been um, uh, you know, vaporized or atomized from surface. So this is a, a very small scale, nanoscale volcano generation. If you look in the high speed camera image, you can identify there are actually a different size of droplet. Some are micron scale, some are nano scale, which is too small to be identified from the video camera. In this way that um, someone proposed we can make the drug inhaler and then you actually um, and put, drop, uh, put a liquid there with drugs and then you apply a cool wave, continue apply it and then you generate the vapor uh, or mist continuously and then you can uh, inhale it for disease uh, treatment. And then because surface cooled wave have very high frequency, the high frequency can generate a much, much smaller droplet, which is very good for the uh, going to the much deeper lungs uh, inside the body. So that means um, we can realize the most function like a liquid moving, small droplet generation, uh, pumping to the position, and then mixing. And then for, bio, for lab on chip, another function is that we need to have a sensor. We need to have very good sensor. Basically, is that uh, um, we need a sensing to identify whether we have disease or not. Um, surface cool wave is very good by uh, it's very good sensor. The principle is that uh, you have one electrode generate the wave. It has given frequency. Once this wave propagation on the surface. If the surface has any reaction, for example, the antibody antigen reaction, and then the mass will be changing, or electricity will be changing, or magnetic, magnetic property will be changing. So this will cause the frequency of the wave changing. So once the wave propagation to another electrode, you can measure what is the frequency after reaching to another. Then you compare of these two original frequency and the frequency afterwards. If there is significant changing, then there would be something happening. Of course, if you want to identify uh, whether it's due to a one type of disease or not, what we are doing is we need to treat the surface with antibody. And then we have the liquid with antigen. And then once it's reaction, there will be mass changing or electricity changing and then causing the frequent changing. So we identify from frequently changing and uh, then determine whether it will have a certain disease with this antibody antigen. So this is the principle for um, the sensing. And also it's very good for handheld and wireless. As we know that we all have the mobile phone. Mobile phone, the most uh, of the filter, a filter is actually made by this kind of acoustical device. When someone call you, the sound signal coming out. Then it trigger this filter. So that means this kind of acoustical device can be wireless. You can using the signal which is remote control. And uh, it can be make a very smaller one like mobile phone device. So all the bio detection, liquid generation mixing can be in the mobile, you know, mo mobile phone tap the device, which is very good. So we actually do some work which can identify using a one of cancer marker. With a different mass of cancer marker, the frequency will shifting according to the mass. So that means the shifting of frequency we can identify whether there are cancer 
um, uh, disease or not. And uh, based on the how much of shifting, we can identify how significant of these cancer uh, structures. So this is uh, one way. So that means we can actually realize a lot of microfluidic function and also biosensing function on one of small chip made by piezoelectric materials. So all the principle, physical principle, is called the acoustic wave technology. Acoustic wave technology, as we explained, is kind of moving the droplet, mixing the droplet, pumping the droplet, and also ejection the droplet as a vapor, or nebulize as a mist. So all the functions, including the biosensing function, can be realized using the acoustic wave devices. So that gives us a, a chance that uh, we can realize most of the function using one technology, which is called acoustic wave technology. Of course, acoustic wave technology is remote control. That means electrode is on site. Within this field, like football stadium, within this field, you actually can play with a lot of other technology, integrate with the other technology together, which form the function. So not only here, there are some other exciting applications, for example, one way we call a cool wave tweezer. So that means we can use a cool wave to manipulate the cells or particles within the liquid. You can actually move the liquid uh, particles or cells within the liquid structure. The principle is made using the acoustic wave technology. One way is that we're using the two electrodes and generate the similar same wave from both electrodes. And the once the two wave interaction together they were forming the standing wave. So they become a one uh, maximum wave. And then within this standing wave, there are some energy lines which are much lower, much higher energy point, much lower point. So all the particles will be aligned into a lowest energy uh, uh, place. So that means you can use in the wave, standing wave, to align the all the particles or cells within the liquid. So that is just a two standing wave from both sides. Or you can using the vertical wave, the two vertical wave. Once the two vertical wave interact together, you will have the matrix structure of the lowest energy, highest energy point. So that means you can actually make the matrix of dots using the two vertical standing wave. So this it will give the much better, you know, choices for us to use into a cell manipulation, a biological cell manipulation. The principle is that uh, the particle within the liquid will be seated into the lowest energy point of the wave. So you can have the two waves forming the standing wave, the liquid drop, a liquid, liquid uh, the particle in the liquid will position to the lowest energy point. If you're changing the wave frequency, changing the the amplitude, this particle is moving, shifting. So that is the principle for uh, liquid manipulation. So let's give an example. So this is a microchannel liquid with a lot of particles, which is six micron particle. And if you apply the standing wave from both sides, it quickly will be aligned. Of course, our channel is very wide. If you're using very, very small channel, you basically might have one line of the particle only. So that means you can manipulate by changing the frequency, changing the microchannel width. So there are a lot of research work is going on which can treat the uh, some blood sample. For example, blood sample, we have the red cells, white cells, we, we have stem cells, we can have dead cells or live cells. They will have the different property once the wave interacts with them. You can use the frequency shifting, you can use the wave energy to push the different particle to the different position. So you can actually separate the cell, separate based on their property or the wave frequency. So there are a lot of research work is going on re recently is how to use a different wave technology, how to make the different microchannels 
to try to separate and moving the liquid uh, the particles. We can give the a movie which we took uh, using high speed camera. Here you can see those ones are 0 0.6 micron particles, so that means uh, 600 nanometer particles moving and have been aligned by a cool wave. Along with it, you can see some of the particle, larger particle, moving from one side and have been also aligned. Because the large particles, small particles, they have different mass. So that the reaction into the wave will be time different. You can using the changing of frequency, changing of time to separate the large particle and small particle, which is very good function for this application. So recently, we also want to do some more exciting work. Most of the Kutuwis technology using the very rigid bulk device. What we are doing is we want to make some device which is flexible, wearable. So that means like patch structure. You can paste on anywhere. Then this one will be lab on chip. It will be a, a collection of the liquid sample, moving sample inside microchannel and do analysis. So the patch structure with the, uh, with the acute wave device is also flexible. You can bend it, changing the shape, paste down to another surface, which is a very good application for this. So for using it, we must have the flexible substrate. So doing it, we choose the polymer. We can deposit a, a piezoelectric pure, pure material on polymer, and then we tighten the electrode then the polymer itself is flexible. And also we can deposit uh, the film on aluminum foil, which is very commonly used in uh, supermarkets, or you can buy from supermarket. And then we deposit the film on aluminum foil, and then we tighten the electrode. And then this will form the flexible device. And then um, we all can realize all the function basically using a kind of this flexible substrate because we have a layer of piezoelectric. Zinc oxide basically is one type of the material which you can deposit at some film piezoelectric. Once you have piezoelectric, you have electrode, it can generate the wave. So you can have the same function as a rigid substrate. You can deposit on polymer and become a transparent acoustic wave. And then you're using this one to form a transparent electrode, transparent uh, device, and paste on any substrate. Um, we can also see that uh, we can bend the device significantly, and we can bend the flexible to a different position. And then it still has very good function, for example, transmission signal. Bend to significantly, you can still get signal from one side to another. You can also um, bend it significantly and the wave propagation and push droplet, ejection droplet. So all the function can be realized. Um, so this is uh, the video showing that on flexible substrate, we bend up and then we apply the power from the left side to the right hand side. So the liquid is to push up significantly. So that means it doesn't matter whether, whether you have rigid substrate or flexible substrate. Once you have the pure electric materials, you can actually have function of the uh, acoustic wave. Okay, so let's do the conclusion. Basically, what we are trying to do is we are doing an integrated lab on chip, which we want to realize most of the functions from a acoustic wave device. So on this device, we can realize the function of the liquid small droplet generation. So that means if you have blood sample, you can separate them into hundreds of small droplets. And after generation droplet, we need to push forward using a cool wave device electrode to the different position. And then we need to mix them using a cool wave to have the reaction. We enhancing the reaction using a cool wave. After reaction, we need to push the waste away and doing the biosensing. So all the function can be using the, um, the acoustic wave device. Mm -hmm. Apart from this, we can also ejection the liquid. We can also nebulize or atomize the liquid as a vapor type of it. So this one will form a 
small lab on chip totally depending on all the functions. And then on the small chip, and then within the electrode, you can actually integrate with other functions like uh, uh, the sensing function or liquid other functions, not only across the wave. So that means it still have the space for other people to work within the electrode. Okay, so that's uh, my talk. Okay. Yeah. So uh, basically, if we want to make the uh, you know, thin film technology, the first aim is that uh, we just get rid of the substrate. So if you are using the bulk substrate, you are limited by substrate. You can only buy this substrate and use it for only one function. But if you're using the thin film technology, you can deposit on um, any substrate, like a, a metallic foil polymer or um, metal or polymer or glass or whatever. And then you can make some new type of application. And also if we integrate with silicon, you know silicon is microelectronic uh, substrate. Then you can integrate with the, the acoustic wave technology with all the other silicon based technology. During the fabrication of silicon devices, you can actually integrate with this acoustic wave together. And also, if you can make it on the polymer, then you can make it flexible. That gives us a chance if we, we can make the product which is patch. You can use it for on the put onto any substrate which is more flexible, uh, more appli app application. Yeah. Yeah, so lab on chip, there are different, uh, different scale of uh, application. So the co very complicated way is that in the hospital, then the hospital might have the, kind of, uh, the structure which can analyze the, the blood droplet for maybe hundreds of uh, different diseases. So that is the very uh, skillful work for a doctor or nurse or engineer to do it. Or another way is that um, you can make it very, um, uh, very low cost of lab on chip, which only one function, for example, we only identify the, you know, the prostate cancer. We tighten this circuit with only this antibody antigen. And then we have the blood just put on here, just indicate whether you have or not. So this has become a kind of once use very low cost. Everybody can buy from the supermarket and just try it. Once you get signal changing, then you must go to hospital because whether it's true or not, you still need to have the pro professional you know, diagnosis. So this gives the different chances you can use it for, uh, for the very, uh, just the every, everyday usage. Like you, you buy something for, uh, for, for that, blood sugar content, right? So that's, that's very cheap. But similarly, you can use the similar one. Um, if, you can, if we can make the patch structure, so you can buy the bondage or whatever, put it here, and then we get signal, and then we identify, or we just pass this to doctor, identify whether it's um, you know, heart disease or not. So these are different level of lab on chip. If it's very costly, it's mostly it's very precision. If very low uh, cost, very cheap, widely applied, it's not very precise, but it just gave you the indication. Yeah. Um, so the next one is to use standard weight. Yeah. All of the standard weight. And in different ways, kind of organizing into the uh, lower energy areas. Yeah. And um, the big drop of the sort of coming out of it. What happens if you have droplets of the same size but different sort of energy? So, 
normally is that uh, if you want to manipulate uh, the particle cells uh, in the liquid, you must have a channel. Uh, it's difficult to play with droplet because the droplet um, basically is, is not uh, the symmetrical pattern. So it's a curve. Once the wave propagation inside, it won't have very easy to get a standing wave. Well, if you fix the chamber or channel, then it's easy to get the, the and also the droplet, once the power is too high, then droplet will deform, right? So it won't be very accurate. So most of the work for alignment is they are in the micro channel or micro chamber. So it's very uniform and it's symmetrical and easily controlled by the process. Yeah, so we, we normally don't do two droplet manipulate with particle within the droplet. Okay. <laughs> okay.